Hey kids, great to see you again. So here I am, uh, I got kind of my basic fishing gear laid out and I've been wanting to do a fishing series for quite a while, but there's a little bit to it. So today I'm just gonna walk you through the gear, the, the base, the bare minimum that you'll need if you're gonna do freshwater fishing, okay? And so I'm just gonna walk you through each of that, uh, each item here. Uh, but before we do that, I do have a dad joke for you. So what do you call a fish? that's missing an eye, a fish, ah, so anyway, uh, <laughs> another little joke that we like to say too is we like to call it catching uh, rather than fishing because, uh, you know, it, it is fun to get out there and spend time together, but it's also, uh, it's, it's nice to actually catch fish while you're there, but, um, you know, make sure you do enjoy the time that you're out there, so anyway, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so the first thing I want to show you is uh, is your rod and reel. You'll need, uh, and so here's something. Uh, again, we're going to be talking about freshwater fishing, uh, and there's all kinds of different, you, you know, we, we just got to get you through the basics, so then, and then you can kind of go from there. There's different things, different techniques, different things that people will use, but you need to know what you're dealing with before you get out on the boat or get out uh, on the shore. So we're just going to kind of familiarize you, you with it in this particular episode. And then we'll have a few more to really walk you through and go through uh, how to fish too. So, okay, so you're going to need a rod and a reel. Okay. And this is a real basic one. It's called a closed face reel. Uh, and it just kind of makes it easy especially for a, a younger kid because all you do when you go to cast it all you do is just push the button and then cast okay and then you step up into something a little nicer when you have an open face like this this is what most people that have advanced will use although i've actually seen some professional guys using these uh the, the, these um also i feel like they're a little harder to get untangled if you ever have, uh, I think they're called a backlash, where it's just all of a sudden, it's just a big spool of line. It's so, it, it's tough to, to get it um, cleaned back up and get you back on, out in the water. Uh, so this one is pretty basic. It kind of walks you, or kind of makes it really easy. If for some reason it gets all tangled up, you can see what's going on because it's not all closed up. So anyway, so that's that. Uh, let's see, what, what do I wanna say next? Um, so you're gonna need a sinker of some sort, something to get the, the uh, something to add weight to the line so that when you cast, because if you tried to cast without a sinker, this is the type of sinker that I use. It's, uh, it's got a hole through it, okay? So it slides up and down the, up and down the line. So here's a close-up of the, the sinker see how it's got that hole in it that's the type of sinker that i use because then you can double them up or triple them up depending on the situation but it's got that little tiny tiny hole right there see that it just slides up and down the line okay and so that's that's the sinker yeah there's different ones you can get you can get, get kind that you just tie right on uh, but this is the kind that i like and i'll show you all that what i how i fish Again, everybody's a little bit different, so. Okay, and then a swivel is something that you'll need as well. So that's a close-up of the swivel. Okay, and you just tie on this end, and then this, you can see that it's got a snap opening that you can open up to to put on a lure if you used it for a lure. The basics shouldn't cost you too much uh, to get you started you know there's so many things out there we always joke uh, my brother and I Rick I uh, always say it catches fishermen like crazy <laughs> because there are so many gadgets and stuff out there you can get by with what I'm gonna show you today and then you if you decide oh I really need to have that but it's kind of like golf too you know you get out and oh, I need that golf club and that may make me an amazing golfer and pretty soon you got way more than you actually need so this will this will get you the basics that you'll need to, to get you going so a swivel okay and I'll walk you through what that's what that's for you'll need some hooks of course you know you won't be able to catch anything if you <laughs> if you don't have any hooks Here's a close-up of the hook that I use. It's a size eight uh, for these smaller fish like that. That should uh, be plenty good. You don't want too big of a hook. 
Uh, so it's good to kind of hide the hook, right? So, and notice the barb, it's got a little barb on it too that kind of helps keep it in. Um, there's times, and I'll show you on my lure, we actually pinch down the barb. It makes it easier to remove if you're catching the fish and releasing it. And with the size of fish that we're gonna be catching, uh, you know, again, there's so many different fish, different ways to fish. If, you, uh, if you're gonna go out on a charter and go out on the ocean, uh, you know, a lot of times you go on a charter, you're, you're not doing really much of anything. You're just going out and having fun and the guide that's out there with you is taking care of the bait, taking care of the rods, taking care of everything, and you're just reeling in the fish which can be kind of fun, gets a little bit, bit expensive, but uh, it is a good way to experience fishing for the first time. Uh, but, so we're talking about freshwater fishing. You will need a license. So I, I brought this here to remind me, this is my little license holder, okay? Uh, just because you'll need a license. And what the license does is it helps uh, pay for uh, the upkeep of the lakes and for the planting of the fish in the lakes, whether you know it or not, most f lakes, uh, at least in Washington, I know where I'm at, uh, and I'm assuming this is the same way across uh, America, they're, they're, they get planted, certain, not, not every lake, you know, certain lakes get planted, uh, quite a few of them get planted with fish. So they grow the fish somewhere else at a fish farm, they bring it over, dump them into the lake, and then so that you actually can go out there and actually catch some fish, right? So, uh, yeah, so anyway, so make sure you have a license before you go out. When you're younger, I think it's up to, I don't even know the age anymore, maybe up to 14 in Washington State, you don't need a license, but once you get old, over that, you need to make sure you have a license because uh, they do check you, you know, they'll come out and double check and it's the right thing to do anyway. You want to support support it so that, uh, you know, so there's fish there when you when you go to fish. Okay, so, and here's another little thing. This is, uh, this one's called Power Bait, and it's always worked really well. There's a lot of knockoff brands and not getting paid to, to mention Power Bait. But uh, I think these were kind of the first ones. There's lots of knockoffs of the same stuff. It's just a, a little putty that you end up putting on the hook. And here's the thing about it. It's a little bit, uh, I don't want to say unfair, but what it is is, you know, when they grow the, the fish at the trout farm uh, before they dump it in the lake, a lot of times they'll, they'll feed them this similar type of feed. And then, so, you know, when you go to a trout farm, they don't use worms, not the ones I go to anyway, not the ones I've been to recently. They put on a little bit of putty <laughs> and throw it out there. And because those fish have been used to getting fed that, and then it's just so easy to catch them. And so that helps with this too. Nice thing about it too, is it floats. Uh, so back in the day, before power bait, we used to use a worm and then a marshmallow. And there's different colors of marshmallows, different scents of marshmallows. I don't know if those really attract them. The main thing I used it for was so that it would float because you want to get your, your bait up off the bottom of the, uh, of the lake so that the fish can see it, right? If it's kind of down there, you know, and they can't see it down in the seaweed or what have, have you, they can't see it that you're probably not gonna catch fish very often. So you need something to get it to get up off the bottom to kind of float to increase your odds of catching something, right? So uh, so we got that. And then um, you'll need some leader line, okay? You'll need, uh, this is four pound test because we're only gonna be catching, you know, those planters are anywhere from eight inches to 12 inches. Uh, so they're not gonna, you're probably not gonna catch a very big fish, but it's still fun and so, uh, you know, another thing too is make sure when you do get a fish on that you play with it. Uh, you know, don't, when I was a kid, you'd get a fish on it. And, oh, I got to horse that thing in here to, to get it back to the boat. But now as I've gotten older, I'm enjoying the experience of hanging out with the people that I'm fishing with. And then also, uh, you know, when you actually get a fish on playing the fish and you can, you can let out line, there's what's called a drag on your, on your reel that you can loosen up so that the that the str the line can go out and so you can play with with the fish more you don't want that super tight because it also could snap the line if if you get a decent sized one so you want to be able to play the fish and kind of wear them out and then get them back to the boat or to the to the dock okay so and then let's see you'll need a a bobber uh you i shouldn't say you need a bobber but let me just say that i i would think a a bobber is a good way for 
kids uh, when they go to fish is to have a bobber, put it on the line, and then when the bobber goes down, you can tell that something's tugging on it, so then they know when to pull up. Because, you know, as you get more advanced, you don't need the bobber, but you want to kind of pay attention to your rod so you can feel when, when you get something, you want to tug back to set the hook in the fish's uh, mouth so that you can then, so that he's hooked. So he doesn't come up and steal your bait and just swim away. You need to be able to set the hook, okay? And that, this helps with that. I don't really use a bobber ever, uh, but, you know, again, it's for kind of a kid, kind of for kids. Uh, and then, so that was... If you're just fishing um, and you're not trolling, if you're trolling, which just means that you're in a boat and you're moving, you can also do cast and reel this in too. You'll need some sort of lure. And now my hook is caught there like this. Okay. This is called a, I think it's called a spoon. This particular one It's kind of a, a knockoff of a spoon. It might not be called an actual spoon. Spoon looks a little bit different. Uh, but anyway, and there's all kinds of different shapes of these particular kinds uh, and here's a close-up of the lure that I was talking about and you can see see how the barb is pinched down or filed down we actually cut that off because we use this in a lake where we catch and release you catch the fish and let it go because if you had that barb it's a lot harder to get it back out there's all kinds of lures too and again it catches fishermen like crazy you know you can go there and just amazing how, how many different colors and different shapes of lures there are so uh Anyway, you can spend a decent amount of money on, on lures. But if we're just fishing offshore, again, you could cast that out, reel it in. But, the, but this particular one, you know, these, the, a lure generally needs to be moving. It has to be actually going through the water. It doesn't just sit on the bottom. It's not going to catch anything, right, if it's just sitting out there. So, all right, so the basics for, uh, yeah, so that's kind of the basic gear. You'll need some sort of tool too. So, you know, there's many times where I've been out fishing and it's like, ah, I wish I would have brought that. So it's good, to, it's good to get a tackle box. Here's a basic tackle box that I have just to kind of keep your gear in. Uh, but it's good to have a tool like this. And this is actually a fishing tool specifically, but there's different kinds you can get. I've had actually just a needle nose in my tackle box before where, because um, you want to be able to remove the hook right because if you you know you catch a fish you bring them to shore and get them in your net uh, and then you need to get the hook off somehow it's helpful to have something to, to pop that out with because if you don't uh, and then I'll, I'll, sometimes the fish will actually swallow the hook too uh, you know how you handle that's up to you some people just snip the line and then retie their hook on uh, yeah so uh, anyway, it's good to have something like this. This also has some knives and different things that you might use too, a bottle opener. Yeah, so it's nice to have some sort of tool with you. Uh, also, you'll need, again, there's so many times, uh, you know, you go out fishing and think you have everything. And, ah, I forgot a stringer, you know? So I've used a stick before for a stringer, but this is what a basic stringer looks like, right? It looks like that. And then you just clip that through their gills, right? So. And again, we'll walk you through everything. I just want to get you familiar with the gear. And then you'll need, a net is nice. I don't know that it's a necessity if you're fishing offshore, but it sure is handy to be able to, you know, if, if you are fishing offshore, I think it's good to get, invest in some rubber boots, you know, just some 12 inch high rubber boots so that you can wade in a little bit if you need to, to get out into the water. Uh, but not again, it's to each his own, you know, if you, if you just want to, trust that you can get the fish all the way in onto the dry land then you're good there but it is nice to have those boots and sometimes you're fishing in muddy type of stuff too and then you can if you're out there you can while the fish is kind of still in the deeper water you can you can net them or on a boat right so okay i think that's kind of it um and so just really quick and then i'll i get into this more but what i how i set my line up okay is the line comes out of the of the pole and then I put on I put on one or two of these uh, these um, sinkers that have the hole in it, and I'll I'll put those on the line, okay. And then I tie a swivel, I tie a swivel on there, okay. And I'll show you the knot <laughs> too for that. So I tie the swivel on, and then I tie on about an 18 inch line piece of line. You can actually buy uh, again. This is kind of if 
if, if, it's re if you want to keep it really basic, you can actually buy them where they got a leader line of about 12 inches, I think, and then the hook is on there. And so then you can just clip, because that swivel, the kind of swivels I buy actually have a snap. It's a snap swivel. So you can snap that open, slide that on, and then snap it closed. But you can also just tie a leader line, and that's what I'll do, a leader line. And I go about 18 inches there, and then I tie the hook to the end of that. And then I put my, my power bait on there, and then the nice thing about that is that with that with that uh, with those sinkers that move up and down the line, uh, when my f my line is in the water and that power bait or whatever it is, the marshmallow and worm float up, it can kind of continue to float up if you want it to, right? Because it's kind of it, it's sliding on there. Okay, hopefully that makes sense for you. Because uh, the the sinkers here and it's kind of. You know, it, the line is able to sl slide through that. Uh, yeah, so anyway, I think that's about it for this. I want to keep it to where you just understand the gear that you, you need, the basic gear. This would, you know, probably end up costing you, depending on how high end you want to go on your rod and reel. Uh, you know, you keep you about $100, I think, for, for the basics, you know, maybe a little bit more than that. And then here's, I, I also, it's nice to have a fillet knife to, to actually clean the fish too because it's nice to do that uh, while you're actually at the lake uh, as well so okay so that's it for this uh, this edition of the fishing series and then we'll uh, end up going into a little bit more uh, more detail in the future ones show you how to cast show you how to tie on uh, the knot that I use so those might actually end up being shorter but I, I you know before you get out there you need to know what you're gonna what to get and what it's called and what it's used for so I just wanted to kind of walk you through that uh, before we go any further so all right so thanks for watching I hope this was helpful for you and God bless you